a nurse encounters a family that experienced the death of their adult child last year. The parents are talking about the upcoming anniversary of their child's death. The nurse spends time with them discussing their child's life and death. The nurse's action best demonstrates which nursing principle? A. Pain management technique B. Facilitating normal morning C. Grief evaluation D. Palliative care Answer B. Facilitating normal morning rational anniversary reactions can reopen grief processes. A nurse should openly acknowledge the loss and talk about the common renewal of grief feeling around the anniversary of the individual's death. This facilitates normal mourning. The nurse is not attempting to alleviate a physical pain. The actions are of open communication, not evaluation. Palliative care refers to comfort measures for symptom relief. A cancer patient asks the nurse what the criteria are for hospice care. What should the nurse answer? A. Having a terminal illness such as cancer B. Needing assistance with pain management C. Expected to live less than 6 to 12 more months D. Completion of an advanced directive Answer C. Expected to live less than 6 to 12 more months rational. The criterion for hospice care is being expected to live less than 6 to 12 more months. Patients with a terminal illness are not eligible until that point. Palliative care provides assistance with pain management when a patient is not eligible for hospice care. An advance directive can be completed by any person, even those who are healthy. A terminally ill patient is experiencing constipation secondary to pain medication. What is the best way for the nurse to improve the patient's constipation problem? A. Massage the patient's abdomen. B. Contact the provider to discontinue pain medication. C. Administer enemas twice daily for seven days. D. Use a stimulant laxative and increase fluid intake. Answer D. Use a stimulant laxative and increase fluid intake. Rational opioid medication is known to slow gastrointestinal transit time, which places the patient at high risk for constipation. Stimulant laxatives are indicated for opioid-induced constipation. Added water to the diet will allow water to be pulled into the GI tract, softening up stool. Massaging the patient's abdomen may cause further discomfort. Discontinuing pain medication is inappropriate for a terminally ill patient. Enema administration is not the first step in the treatment of opioid-induced constipation. A severely depressed patient cannot state any positive attributes to his or her life. The nurse patiently sits with this patient and assists the patient to identify several activities the patient is actually looking forward to in life. The nurse is helping the patient to demonstrate which spiritual concept? A. Time management B. Hope C. Charity D. Faith Answer B. Hope rational. The concept of hope is vital to nursing. It enables a person to anticipate positive experiences. Being patient and friendly and creating positive relationships are key concepts in all areas of nursing, but especially with depressed patients. The nurse's actions do not address time management, charity, or faith. In preparation for the eventual death of a female hospice patient of the Muslim faith, the nurse organizes a meeting of all hospice caregivers. A plan of care to be followed when this patient dies is prepared. This plan of care would include a. Male health care workers care for the body after death has occurred. b. Body preparation for autopsy. C. Body preparation for cremation. D. Female health care workers care for the body after death has occurred. Answer D. Female health care workers care for the body after death has occurred. Rational Islamic culture calls for modesty and same-sex caregivers whenever possible. Muslim faith discourages cremation and autopsy to preserve the sanctity of the soul of the deceased.
Family members gather in the emergency department after learning that a family member was involved in a motor vehicle accident. After learning of the family member's unexpected death, the surviving family members begin to cry and scream in despair. The nurse recognizes this is the Bowlby attachment theory stage of A. Numbing, B. Disorganization and despair, C. Bargaining, D. Yearning and searching. Answer, D. Yearning and searching. Rational, yearning and searching characterize the second bereavement phase in the Bowlby attachment theory. Emotional outbursts are common in this phase. During the numbing phase, the family may feel a sense of unreality. During disorganization and despair, the reason why the loss occurred is constantly questioned. Bargaining is part of the Kubler-Ross stage is not of the Bowlby attachment theory. You are caring for a patient who is depressed because the only child has gone away to college. The nurse will assess this type of depression as A. Actual loss B. Perceived loss C. Situational loss D. Maturational loss. Answer D. Maturational loss. After the anticipated demise of a chronically ill patient, the unit nurse is found crying in the staff lounge. The best response to her crying colleague would be A. It is normal to feel this way. Give yourself some time to mourn. B. Your other patients still need you, so hurry back to them. C. You're being a bad role model to the unit's nursing students. D. Why don't you take a sedative to cope? Answer A. It is normal to feel this way. Give yourself some time to mourn. Rational nurses often witness suffering on a daily basis. Nurses as humans also experience grief and loss when they have been intensely involved in the patient's suffering and death. Offer comfort and understanding to colleagues and maintain a stable patient care environment. It is inappropriate to create guilt by telling a grieving nurse to hurry back to her patients or by indicating that she is a bad role model. Suggesting that a colleague take sedative during a shift is dangerous for the safety of patients in her care. A family is grieving after learning of a family member's accidental death. The transplant coordinator requests to talk with the family about possible organ and tissue donation. The nurse recognizes that A. All religions allow for organ donation. B. Life support must be removed before organ and tissue retrieval occurs. C. The best time for organ and tissue donation is immediately after the autopsy. D. The transplant coordinator is working in accordance with federal law. Answer D. The transplant coordinator is working in accordance with federal law. Rational, it is a federal law to require facilities to develop policies about organ donation. The transplant coordinator has additional education on providing answers about organ donation. Not all religions allow for organ donation. A patient may be on life support during organ removal to preserve organ tissues. Autopsy compromises organ integrity. Removal should occur prior. An Orthodox Jewish rabbi has been pronounced dead. The nursing assistant respectfully asks family members to leave the room and go home as post-mortem care is provided. Which of the following statements from the supervising nurse reflects correct knowledge of Jewish culture? A. I wish they would go home because we have work to do here. B. Family members stay with the body until burial the next day. C. I should have called a male colleague to handle the body. D. I thought they would quietly leave after praying and touching the rabbi's head. Answer B. Family members stay with the body until burial the next day. Rational. Jewish culture calls for family members or religious officials to stay with the decedent's body until the time of burial. A male provider is unnecessary. Requesting or expecting the family to go home is not providing culturally sensitive care. The palliative team's primary obligation to a patient in severe pain includes which of the following? 
A. Supporting the patient's nurse in her grief. B. Providing postmortem care for the patient. C. Teaching the patient the stages of grief. D. Enhancing the patient's quality of life. Answer D. Enhancing the patient's quality of life rational. The primary goal of palliative care is to help patients and families achieve the best quality of life. Providing support for the patient's nurse is not the primary obligation when the patient is experiencing severe pain. Not all collaborative team members would be able to provide post-mortem care, as is the case for nutritionists, social workers, and pharmacists. Teaching about stages of grief should not be the focus when severe pain is present. A man is hospitalized after surgery that amputated both lower extremities owing to injuries sustained during military service. The nurse should recognize his need to grieve for what type of loss? A. Maturational loss B. Situational loss C. Perceived loss D. Uncomplicated loss Answer B. Situational loss rational. Loss of a body part from injury is a situational loss. Maturational losses occur as part of normal life transitions. Perceived loss is not obvious to other people. Uncomplicated is not a type of loss, it is a description of normal grief. I know it seems strange, but I feel guilty being pregnant after the death of my son last year, said a woman during her routine obstetrical examination. The nurse spends extra time with this woman, helping her to better bond with her unborn child. This demonstrates which nursing technique? A. Facilitating morning B. Providing curative therapy C. Promoting spirituality D. Eradicating grief. Answer A. Facilitating morning rational. The nurse facilitates mourning in family members who are still surviving. By acknowledging the pregnant woman's emotions, the nurse helps the mother bond with her fetus and recognize the emotions that still exist for the deceased child. The nurse is not attempting to help the patient eradicate grief, which would be unrealistic. Curative therapy and spiritual promotion are not addressed by the nurse's statement. The nurse has had three patients die during the past two days. Which approach is most appropriate to manage the nurse's sadness? A. Telling the next patients why the nurse is sad. B. Talking with a colleague or writing in a journal. C. Exercising vigorously rather than sleeping. D. Avoiding friends until the nurse feels better. Answer B. Talking with a colleague or writing in a journal rational self-care strategies for nurses include talking with a close colleague and reflecting on feelings by writing in a journal. It is inappropriate for a nurse to talk with patients to resolve the nurse's grief. Although exercise is important for self-care, sleep is also important. Shutting oneself away from friends is not self-care. The nurse should spend time with people who are nurturing. A woman is called into her supervisor's office regarding her deteriorating work performance since the loss of her husband two years ago. The woman begins sobbing and saying that she is falling apart at home as well. The woman is escorted to the nurse's office where the nurse recognizes the woman's symptoms as which of the following? A. Normal grief B. Complicated grief C. Disenfranchised grief D. Perceived grief Answer B. Complicated grief rational. Complicated or dysfunctional grief occurs when an individual has a complicated grieving process that interferes with common routines of life for excessively long periods of time. Normal grief is the most common reaction to death. It involves a complex range of normal coping strategies. Disenfranchised grief involves a relationship that is not socially sanctioned. Perceived grief is not a type of grief. Perceived loss is a loss that is not obvious to other people. The father has recently begun to attend his children's school function since the death of his wife. This would best be described as which task in the word in grief tasks model? A. Task IB. Task 2C. Task 3D. Task IV. 
Answer. C. Task 3. Rational. The Warden Grief Tasks model consists of four tasks. Task 3 is seen when the surviving family member begins to adjust to life without the deceased. Task I is accepting the reality of the loss. Task 2 is working through the pain of grief. And Task IV is emotionally relocating the deceased and moving on with life. The mother of a recently murdered child keeps the child's room intact. Family members are encouraging her to redecorate and move forward in life. The visiting nurse recognizes this behavior as blank grief. A. Normal B. End of life C. Abnormal D. Complicated. Answer A. Normal rational. Family members will grieve differently. One sign of normal grief is keeping the deceased individual's room intact as a way to keep that person alive in the minds of survivors. This is happening after the family member is deceased. So it is not end of life grief. It is not abnormal or complicated grief. The child died recently. Validation of the dying person's life would be demonstrated by which nursing action? A. Taking pictures of visitors. B. Calling the organ donation coordinator. C. Listening to family stories about the person. D. Providing quiet visiting time. Answer. C. Listening to family stories about the person. Rational. Listening to family members' stories validates the importance of the dying individual's life and reinforces the dignity of the person's life. Taking pictures of visitors does not address the value of a person's life. Calling organ donation and providing private visiting time are components of the dying process, but they do not validate a dying person's life. A couple is informed that their fetus condition is incompatible with life after birth. Nurses can best help the couple with their end-of-life decision-making by offering them which of the following. A. An advanced directive to complete B. Brief discussion and funeral guidance C. Time and careful explanation C. Instructions on how to proceed. Answer. C. Time and careful explanations. Families can have limited knowledge when asked to make important ethical decisions. Nurses have the time, patience, and knowledge base to assist the family to understand their ethical situation and to help them make their own educated decision. Advanced directives are completed by the person who is dying. Funeral guidance is best provided by a chaplain or a caretaker. A correctional facility nurse is called to the scene of a deceased inmate. The correction officer wants to quickly move the body to the funeral home because he is not comfortable with death. The inmate's body will need to be transported where? A. Coroner's office for an autopsy. B. Police department for an investigation. C. Directly to the inmate's family. D. Warden for inspection. Answer A. Coroner's office for an autopsy rational law often requires that an autopsy be performed if death occurred during incarceration as the result of foul play, homicide, or suicide, or as an accidental death as occurs in car accidents. The nurse must understand the policies that are applied in cases of foul play death and must ensure that the decedent's body is properly cared for after death. Despite the emotional feelings of individuals in close contact with the decedent, a dying patient with liver and renal failure requires pain medication. The nurse anticipates that the medication dose will be A, given at appropriate milligrams per kilogram medication levels, B, a decreased dose from milligrams per kilogram levels, C, an increased dose from milligrams per kilogram levels. D. Given at mid-range for dosing at recommended levels. Answer. B. A decreased dose from milligrams per kilogram levels. Rational. A dying individual will likely have a decline in renal and liver functioning. Because of reduced organ functioning, a decreased dose would be in order so the individual does not develop toxic levels of the medications. A patient cancels a scheduled appointment because she will be attending a shiva for a family member. Recognizing the importance of this cultural ritual, 
the nurse's best comment would be which of the following? A. Congratulations, what's the baby's name? B. I'm so sorry for your loss. C. Missionary church outreach is so important. D. Can I buy a ticket to this fundraiser? Answer. B. I'm so sorry for your loss. Rational. The Jewish morning ritual of Shiva incorporates the community's helping behaviors toward those experiencing death sets expectations for behaviors of the survivor and provides the community with sustaining traditions and rituals. An understanding of the religious and cultural significance of Shiva allows the nurse to know how to appropriately respond. During a follow-up visit, a woman is describing new onset of marital discord with her terminally ill spouse. Using the Kubler-Ross behavioral theory, the nurse recognizes that the spouse is in which stage of dying? A. Denial B. Bargaining C. Anger D. Depression Answer C. Anger Rational Kubler-Ross's traditional theory involves five stages of dying. The anger stage of adjustment to an impending death can involve resistance, anger at God, anger at people, and anger at the situation. Denial would involve failure to accept a death. Bargain is an action to delay acceptance of death by bartering. Depression would present as withdrawal from others. Aneurysis is reported in a previously toilet-trained toddler. While gathering a health history from the grandparent, the nurse asks about which factor is the most likely cause. A. Lack of outside playtime B. Having too many toys, C. Dietary changes, D. Recent parental death. Answer, D. Recent parental death, rational, a child's stage of development and chronological age will influence how he or she grieves. Toddlers can show grief through changes in their eating patterns, changes in their sleeping patterns, fussiness or irritability, and changes in their bowel and bladder habits. It is common for younger children to regress when under increased stress, lack of outside playtime, dietary changes, and having too many toys are unlikely to cause aneurysis. Mrs. Harrison's father died a week ago. Mr. Harrison is experiencing headaches and fatigue and keeps shouting at his wife to turn down the television, although he has not done so in the past. Mrs. Harrison is having trouble sleeping, has no appetite, and says she feels like she is choking all the time. How should the nurse interpret these assessment findings as the basis for a follow-up assessment? A. Mrs. Harrison is grieving and Mr. Harrison is angry. B. Mrs. Harrison is ill and Mr. Harrison is grieving. C. Both Mr. and Mrs. Harrison likely are in denial. D. Both Mr. and Mr. Harrison likely are grieving. Answer, D. Both Mr. and Mr. Harrison likely are grieving rational. Symptoms of normal grief include headache, fatigue, oversensitivity to noise, insomnia, appetite disturbance, and choking sensation. Different people manifest different symptoms. Denial is assessed when the person indicates that he is not accepting that the loss happened. Form of necessary loss, including all normally expected life changes across the lifespan. A. Maturational losses. B. Situational losses. C. Actual loss. D. Perceived loss. Answer A. Maturational losses. Sudden unpredictable external event. A. Maturational losses. B. Situational losses. C. Actual loss. D. Perceived loss. Answer B. Situational losses. A woman experiences the loss of a very early term pregnancy. Her friends do not mention the loss, and someone suggests to her that she can always try again. The woman feels confusion over her sadness and stops talking about it with others. What type of grief response is she most likely experiencing? 1. Delayed 2. Anticipated 3. Exaggerated 4. Disenfranchised.
answer four disenfranchised rational this woman's friends are not fully acknowledging the value of her pregnancy because of the short length of time the woman was pregnant or because by comparison the loss seems less than losing a child after birth the loss does not seem legitimate thus the woman does not experience sympathy from others and feels disenfranchised can no longer feel hear or know a person or object a maturational losses b situational losses c actual loss d perceived loss answer c actual loss are uniquely defined by the person experiencing loss and are less obvious to other people a maturational losses b situational losses c actual loss d perceived loss Answer D. Perceived loss. Emotional response to a loss which is unique to the individual. A. Grief B. Mourning C. Bereavement D. Normal Grief E. Complicated Grief. Answer A. Grief. A nurse has the responsibility of managing a deceased patient's post-mortem care. Arrange the steps for post-mortem care in the proper order. 1. Bathe the body of the deceased. 2. Collect any needed specimens. 3. Remove all tubes and indwelling lines. 4. Position the body for family visit viewing. 5. Speak to the family members about their possible participation. 6. Confirm that request for organ, tissue donation and or autopsy has been made. 7. Notify a support person, e.g., spiritual care provider, bereavement specialist for the family. 8. Accurately tag the body, indicating the identity of the deceased and safety issues regarding infection control. 9. Elevate the head of the bed. Answer 6925731148. Rational positioning the head of the bed first helps prevent pooling of blood in the face during all of the other preparations. Find out if there are medical or legal considerations, specimens, autopsy, or tissue donation before beginning so you do not have to disrupt your care of the person once you have started. Notify a support person for the family while you make other preparations. Invite the family early so you do not violate any cultural or spiritual rituals by beginning your care too early. Once ready to work with the body, remove drains before bathing the body in the event that there is leakage or soiling of the bed on removal. Arrange the person for viewing and transport to the morgue as the last step. Captures grief and mourning, emotional responses, and outward behaviors for a person experiencing loss. A. Grief B. Mourning C. Bereavement D. Normal Grief E. Complicated Grief Answer C. Bereavement Complex emotional, cognitive, social, physical, behavioral, and spiritual responses to loss and death. A. Grief B. Mourning C. Bereavement D. Normal Grief E. Complicated Grief Answer D. Normal Grief Dysfunctional The grieving person has a prolonged or significant time moving forward after a loss. A. Grief B. Mourning C. Bereavement D. Normal Grief E. Complicated Grief Answer E. Complicated Grief Marginal or unsupported grief, the relationship may not be socially sanctioned. A. Disenfranchised grief, B. Delayed grief, C. Ambiguous loss, D. Exaggerated grief, E. Mass grief, F. Anticipatory grief. Answer A. Disenfranchised grief. A nurse is providing post-mortem care. Which action is the priority? 1. Locating the patient's clothing. 2. Providing culturally and religiously sensitive care in body preparation. 3. Transporting the body to the morgue as soon as possible to prevent body decomposition. 4. 
providing all post-mortem care to protect the family of the deceased from having to see the body. Answer 2. Providing culturally and religiously sensitive care in body preparation rational. At the end of life religious and cultural expectations are important for the lasting memories held by the family about the way their loved one's death occurred. Sensitive care contributes to feelings of closure, appropriateness of the death rituals, and fulfilled family obligations. A family member of a recently deceased patient talks casually with a nurse at the time of the patient's death and expresses relief that she will not have to visit at the hospital anymore. What theoretical description of grief best applies to this family member? 1. Denial 2. Anticipatory grief 3. Dysfunctional grief 4. Yearning and searching Answer 2. Anticipatory grief rational if a person has been anticipating a loss for some time, he or she may have already experienced many of the emotions, sadness, shock commonly associated with death. Outward social expression of grief and the behavior associated with loss that can be culturally influenced. A. Grief B. Mourning C. Bereavement D. Normal Grief E. Complicated Grief Answer B. Mourning Suppressing or postponing normal grief responses. A. Disenfranchised grief B. Delayed grief C. Ambiguous loss D. Exaggerated grief E. Mass grief F. Anticipatory grief Answer B. Delayed grief Difficult to process because of the lack of finality and unknown outcomes. A. Disenfranchised grief B. Delayed grief C. Ambiguous loss D. Exaggerated grief E. Mass grief F. Anticipatory grief Answer C. Ambiguous loss May exhibit self-destructive or maladaptive behavior, obsessions, or psychiatric disorders. A. Disenfranchised grief B. Delayed grief C. Ambiguous loss D. Exaggerated grief E. Mass grief F. Anticipatory grief Answer D. Exaggerated grief person is unaware of disruptive behavior as a result of loss. A. Disenfranchised grief B. Delayed grief C. Ambiguous loss D. Exaggerated grief E. Mass grief F. Anticipatory grief Answer E. Mass grief The unconscious process of disengaging before the actual loss or death occurs. A. Disenfranchised grief B. Delayed grief C. Ambiguous loss D. Exaggerated grief E. Mass grief F. Anticipatory grief Answer F. Anticipatory grief Describe Kubler-Ross's five stages of dying A. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance B. Numbing, yearning, searching, disorganization, despair, reorganization, C. Accept reality. Experience pain, adjust, move on with life. D. Recognize loss, react, express pain, reminisce, relinquish attachments, readjust. Answer A. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance. Describe Bowlby's attachment theory of mourning, A. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance. B. Numbing, yearning, searching, disorganization, despair, reorganization, C. Accept reality. Experience pain, adjust, move on with life. D. Recognize loss, react, express pain, reminisce, relinquish attachments, readjust. Answer B. Numbing, yearning, searching, disorganization, despair, reorganization. Describe Warden's tasks of mourning, A. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance. B. Numbing, yearning, searching, disorganization, despair, reorganization, C. Accept, reality, experience pain. Adjust, move on with life. 
D. Recognize loss, react, express pain, reminisce, relinquish, attachments, readjust. Answer C. Accept reality, experience pain, adjust, move on with life. Describe Rondo's process model of mourning. A. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance. B. Numbing, yearning, searching, disorganization, despair, reorganization. C. Accept reality. Experience pain, adjust, move on with life. D. Recognize loss, react, express pain, reminisce, relinquish, attachments, readjust. Answer. Do you recognize a loss, react, express pain, reminisce, relinquish, attachments, readjust? Which is not important when assessing for grief? A. Coping style. B. Electrolyte balance. C. Relationships. D. Personal goals. E. Beliefs. F. Support systems. G. Sources of hope. Answer B. Electrolyte balance. Which statement about loss is accurate? A. Loss may be maturational, situational, or both. B. The degree of stress experienced is unrelated to the type of loss. C. Loss is only experienced when there is an actual absence of something valued. D. The more an individual has invested in what is a loss, the less the feeling of loss. Answer A. Loss may be maturational, situational, or both. A hospice program emphasizes a prolongation of life. B. Hospital-based care. C. Palliative treatment and control of symptoms. D. Curative treatment and alleviation of symptoms. Answer C. Palliative treatment and control of symptoms. Trying questionable and experimental forms of therapy is a behavior that is characteristic of which stage of dying? A. Anger B. Bargaining C. Depression D. Acceptance Answer B. Bargaining All of the following are crucial needs of the dying patient except A. Control of pain B. Love and belonging C. Freedom from decision-making D. Preservation of dignity and self-worth Answer C. Freedom from decision-making As a first-year nursing student, you are assigned to care for a dying patient. To best prepare you for this assignment, you will want to complete a course on death and dying. B. Control your emotions about death and dying. C. Compare this experience to the death of a family member. D. Develop a personal understanding of your own feelings about grief and death. Answer D. Develop a personal understanding of your own feelings about grief and death. Which of the following is not an expected short-term outcome indicating effective grief interventions? A. Decreased inner pain. B. Talking about the loss without feeling overwhelmed. C. Improved energy level. D. Normalized sleep and dietary patterns. E. Reorganization of life patterns. F. Improved ability to make decisions. G. Finding it easier to be around other people. Answer A. Decreased inner pain. Which of the following is not an expected long-term outcome indicating effective grief interventions? A. Return of a sense of humor and normal life patterns be renewed or a new personal relationship. C. Decreased inner pain. D. Improved ability to make decisions. Answer D. Improved ability to make decisions. A nurse working in palliative care who experiences physical, emotional, and spiritual exhaustion is suffering from what? A. Compassion, fatigue, B. Burnout, C. Psychological drain, D. Work stress overload. Answer A. Compassion, fatigue. An elderly client whose middle-aged daughter recently died of breast cancer now complains of mild abdominal pain, 5-pound weight loss, insomnia, and fatigue. 
When no physiological cause can be found, the nurse suspects these are symptoms of A. Hypochondria B. Normal grieving C. Spiritual distress D. Denial Answer. Be normal. Grieving rational. Physiological symptoms are a normal part of grieving, particularly in the early phases. In the absence of pathology, these are signs of normal grieving. Denial. Spiritual distress and hypochondria usually do not manifest themselves with physical symptoms. A nurse who works effectively with elderly clients who are dying and their families recognizes that a hospice services are preferable as death nears. B. The nurse must be comfortable with her own concerns and feelings about death. C. Most people are not afraid to die if they have adequate information about what is happening. D. At least some pain accompanies most deaths. Answer. B. The nurse must be comfortable with her own concerns and feelings about death. Rational. Nurses and other healthcare providers who are comfortable with their own understanding of death can be effective when working with the dying, rather than bringing their conflicted feelings to a stressful situation. Unless the nurse has used some critical thinking to look at and investigate her feelings and understandings, they might conflict with those of the client. Many people are indeed afraid of dying, especially if pain might occur. However, pain is not inevitably associated with death. Hospice might not be appropriate or possible for many individuals. It is important for a nurse to understand the grieving process because a. it assists the nurse to understand the dynamics of grieving. b. it is important to understand the trajectory of grief. c. Understanding might influence how the nurse deals with death. D. It assists the nurse in guiding the bereaved through the stages of grieving in the optimal order. Answer. A. It assists the nurse to understand the dynamics of grieving rational. Grief is unique to each individual and family and culture. By understanding the grieving process. The nurse will recognize the social, cultural, and physiological dynamics present during grieving. There is no optimal order in which individuals must move through the grieving process. The goal of nursing interventions for a bereaved elderly person is to a assist the bereaved individual to achieve a healthy adjustment to the loss. b. Encourage verbalization about the loved one. c. Guide the bereaved individual through the stages of grief in the usual order. D. Teach about the grieving process and offer support. Answer. To assist the bereaved individual to achieve a healthy adjustment to the loss. Rational. The goal of grieving is to adjust to the loss in a time and manner that is culturally acceptable to the individual who experienced the loss. There is no timetable that must be met. No defined way to achieve the goal. An intervention to progress toward a goal is verbalization about the loved one. Teaching is a nursing goal and is not client-centered. An elderly person end-stage renal disease is admitted to a nursing home for palliative care. Nursing interventions will be a ambulation as desired. B. Assessment for urinary output. C. Pain relief. D. CPR if needed. Answer C. Pain relief. Which approach to helping grieving people is most consistent with postmodern grief theories? 1. Help the patient identify the tasks to be accomplished during his or her grief. 2. Encourage people to recognize stages of grieving in anticipation of what is to come. 3. Listen carefully to a person's story of how his or her grief experience is unfolding. 4. Offer general grief timelines to help the person know when a phase will pass. Answer. 3. Listen carefully to a person's story of how his or her grief experience is unfolding. Rational. Postmodern grief interventions focus on the uniqueness of the patient's story that unfolds and writes itself as the person lives through the experience of loss. 
A patient who has a serious life-limiting chronic illness wants to continue to engage in self-care and live as normally as possible. Which of the following nursing responses reflect a helpful understanding of patient self-care at the end of life? 1. Learning to accept that you can't perform some activities anymore will bring you more acceptance and peace. 2. Which activities are most important to you, and how can you continue to do them? 3. People in your life want to help you with things, allow them to do what they want for you. 4. Spending more of your time resting or reading will conserve your energy. Answer 2. Which activities are most important to you, and how can you continue to do them? Rational, even seriously ill people want to carry on with life, doing what they can to maintain their identity and purpose. They know best how to regulate their energy and wishes for how to spend their time. A nurse is uncomfortable discussing spiritual concerns with a dying client. The most helpful action for the client would be for the nurse to plan to A. Make an attempt to meet the client's needs in this area, even if uncomfortable. B. Ask to be removed from the care of that client. C. Seek personal counseling to improve skills in this area. D. Request a member of the pastoral care staff visit the client. Answer. D. Request a member of the pastoral care staff visit the client. Rationale, pastoral care is available at most sites, and if a nurse is uncomfortable with spiritual issues, the pastoral care services may be better able to meet the spiritual needs of the client. A nurse would plan to get education, rather than counseling on how to meet the needs of dying clients. Discomfort with a situation is not a reason for asking to be removed from caring for that client. When opioids are prescribed for pain at the end of life, the nurse should understand that A. Death is likely to be soon. B. Opioids most likely will be a PRN order. C. Side effects still must be treated. D. Other medications are no longer useful for the client. Answer C. Side effects still must be treated. A priority nursing intervention for an elderly person who is dying and experiencing anxiety is to a. contact family members to alert them and enlist their help. b. allow the client time alone to conduct a life review. c. explain that anxiety is a common experience. d. assist the individual to identify fears. Answer D. Assist the individual to identify fears. Regarding grief in older adults, which understanding helps guide your relationship with an elderly patient? 1. Older adults have usually sustained many losses in life, which influence the current loss. 2. Older adults with a poor memory experience grief less intensely. 3. Older adults generally handle loss better because they have more experience with it. 4. Social support is less important because an older adult's circle of friends has become smaller. Answer 1. Older adults have usually sustained many losses in life, which influence the current loss. Rational older adults have usually sustained more losses because they have lived longer. For people at any age, each loss influences the way one responds to subsequent losses. The loss of a social network makes it more important to find resources and sources of social support for grieving older adults. Sometimes many losses overpower a person's coping resources instead of making him or her stronger. Which of the following statements, if made by a dying client, would indicate that spiritual needs most likely are being met? The individual states that a. The afterlife is the best place. b. I no longer fear pain. c. Family is the most important part of my life. d. There have been many positive things about my life and I have hope. Answer D. There have been many positive things about my life, and I have hope.
A self-care goal you set when caring for dying and grieving patients includes 1. Learning not to take losses so seriously. 2. Limiting involvement with patients who are grieving. 3. Maintaining life balance and reflecting on the meaning of your work. 4. Admitting that you are not well suited to care for people who are grieving and asking the charge nurse not to assign you to care for these patients. Answer 3. Maintaining life balance and reflecting on the meaning of your work. Rational maintaining life balance is very important for emotional, spiritual, and physical well-being. Withdrawing or not seeing one's work with grieving people as serious does not help maintain balance but rather may contribute to numbing feelings. When an elderly client expresses a wish to forego additional treatment for cancer and to die, a priority action of the nurse would be a call the family. B. Explore the client's understanding of the consequences of such a decision. C. Suggest the client reconsider the finality of the decision. D. Call the physician. Answer B. Explore the client's understanding of the consequences of such a decision. A family member asks a home care nurse what he should do if the patient's serious chronic illness worsens even with increased medical interventions. How does the nurse best begin a conversation about the goals of care at the end of life? 1. Encourage the family member to think more positively about the patient's new therapy. 2. Avoid the discussion because it has to do with medical, not nursing. Diagnosis 3. Initiate a discussion about advanced directives with the patient, family, and health care team. 4. Begin the discussion by asking the patient to identify his or her beliefs about the goals of care while the family member is present. Answer 4. Begin the discussion by asking the patient to identify his or her beliefs about the goals of care while the family member is present. Rational. If you ask the patient first what he or she believes is best, you know how to discuss that option in more detail and give realistic ways of reaching the desired goal. Discussing other possible options after the patient's preference helps family members know and understand the patient's wishes. Regarding the request for organ and tissue donation at the time of death, the nurse needs to be aware that a specially educated personnel make requests. B. Requests are usually made by the nurse caring for the patient at the time of death. C. Only patients who have given prior instruction regarding donation become donors. D. Professionals need to be very selective in whom they ask for organ and tissue donation. Answer A. Specially educated personnel make requests. Rational individuals specially trained in requesting organ donations facilitate the process. They are skilled in talking compassionately to people who have suffered a tragic sudden loss and have answers to many questions that people have regarding the donation process. The nurse notes that a woman who recently began cancer treatment appears quiet and withdrawn, states that she did not believe the treatments will make any difference, does not ask about her progress, and missed two chemotherapy sessions. Based on the above assessment data, the nurse gathers more information to consider making which of the following nursing diagnoses. A. Anxiety B. Hopelessness C. Spiritual distress E. Complicated grieving Answer. Be hopelessness rational. The patient exhibits signs and symptoms of hopelessness. Manifestations of hopelessness include withdrawing, not following through with recommended treatment, and losing confidence that anything she does will be of help. Which of the following nursing actions best reflects sensitivity to cultural differences related to end-of-life care? A. Practice honesty with everyone, telling patients about their illness, even if the news is not good. B. Ask family members if they prefer to help with the care of the body after death. C. 
provide post-mortem care at the time of death to relieve family members of this difficult job. D. Value patient self-determination, understanding that each person makes his or her own decisions. Answer. We ask family members if they prefer to help with the care of the body after death. Rational giving people options in caregiving allows them to honor their cultural beliefs. Although Western healthcare practices place a high value on honesty, people from some cultural backgrounds regard being told the truth as harmful. A young man is diagnosed with a serious life-changing illness. His conversations during his first two days of hospitalization are abrupt, superficial, and unrelated to his illness. What understanding about communication enhances your therapeutic communication with this patient? A. Younger patients are usually less talkative about their diagnosis. B. All patients benefit by talking about their feelings with another person. C. Avoid discussing illness-related topics with quiet patients. D. Remain alert for signals that the patient wants to discuss his illness. Answer D. Remain alert for signals that the patient wants to discuss his illness. Rational. Make no presumptions about this patient other than the fact that he is not yet ready to talk about his situation. However, stay alert for a time when he might want to talk to you. Some people do not work through their problems by talking to others. You've identified three nursing diagnoses for a patient who is having anxiety and hopelessness as a result of a loss. Which general approach do you take to prioritize the nursing diagnoses? Select all that apply. 1. Use family members and physician orders as primary resources for prioritizing your actions. 2. Address the nursing diagnosis that most affects the medical diagnosis. 3. Ask the patient to identify the most distressing symptom and first address that diagnosis. 4. Use nursing knowledge to address the problem that is the underlying cause of other diagnoses. Answer 3. 4. 3. Ask the patient to identify the most distressing symptom and first address that diagnosis. 4. Use nursing knowledge to address the problem that is the underlying cause of other diagnoses. Rational, when you are prioritizing nursing diagnoses, first get the patient's sense of the most important issue. Some patients do not fully understand the physiology or relationship among diagnoses. For example, one patient does not understand that pain contributes to a decreased appetite or depression. Your nursing knowledge along with the patient's perceptions help you determine the diagnosis with the highest priority. The nurse suggests that a patient receive a palliative care consultation for symptom management related to anxiety and increasing pain. A family member asks the nurse if this means that the patient is dying and is now in hospice. What does the nurse tell the family member about palliative care? Select all that apply. 1. Hospice and palliative care are the same thing. 2. Palliative care is for any patient, any time, any disease, in any setting. 3. Palliative care strategies are primarily designed to treat the patient's illness. 4. Palliative care interventions relieve the symptoms of illness and treatment. Answer 2. 4. 2. Palliative care is for any patient, any time, any disease, in any setting for. Palliative care interventions relieve the symptoms of illness and treatment. Rational. Palliative care is not reserved for people who are at the end of life. The goal of palliative care is to help relieve the burdens of illness at any time along the continuum of that illness.